Hello and welcome back to Investing for Generations, your channel for high quality stock research for long term value investor. And today I want to give you my weekly update for week 34 of 2021 as every weekend. And if you are new to my channel, you get full insight to my real money portfolio. And with this portfolio, which I started at the 2nd of December 2019, I have a performance since of 66%, which is an outperformance to the S&P 500 of around 22% and of the Dow Jones Industrial of around 40%. And as every weekend, I want to give you the full insight of the things happened last week. And these are the topics today. First of all, take a look at the Q2 earnings of one of my businesses. Then I want to give you my idea what to do with my relatively big cash position. Take a look at the transactions I did last week, the received dividends and the performance overall. So let's go. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like the whole idea and if they like the transparency on my portfolio and just join me on my road as a long-term value investor. So first of all, take a look at the Q2 numbers of Scotiabank. I made another video uh, this week about the situations of the banks overall. You find the link here up on the screen there. I also go a little bit into the earnings of Scotiabank, uh, but just to make it complete, I also want to tell you about the Q2 earnings here on my weekly update. So the Bank of Nova Scotia came out with quarterly earnings of $1.64 per share, beating the ZEX consensus estimate of $1.50 per share. The revenues of $6.31 billion for the quarter ended July 2021, surpassing the SACS consensus estimate by 3.23%. So overall, very good numbers, I would say, as expected, because the Bank of Nova Scotia is one of the best banks, one of the most stable banks in Canada and North America overall. And next to that, Bank of Nova Scotia also is a very safe dividend payer. And so the Bank of Nova Scotia declares 90 cent Canadian dollar dividend, which is in line with a previous dividend. And so the forward dividend yield is 4.48%. Quite good. And overall, my position with the Bank of Nova Scotia or Scotia Bank of 106 shares is up now 71%. You see here on the green arrow or even the green dots, uh, I bought the majority of my shares in uh, Q2 of 2020, right in the pandemic crash. And so I'm up now 71% and overall the absolute performance is $2,911. So quite nice. And as I said, also a safe and good dividend payer. And so I already received 382 dollar of dividends. I will hold the Bank of Nova Scotia for the long term. There's no need to think about to sell. I will just stick with it. Re just receive the dividends and let this company make their business. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, you find deeper analyzers of the Bank of Nova Scotia on my channel, but you also find deeper analyzers to all of these companies in my portfolio on my channel. And in these deeper analyzers, I go through the business model, through the management, through the financial numbers, I calculate the intrinsic value and then tell you when and why I bought. Hopefully you find any value in that. If so, just subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell to never miss another video. What to do with the cash? Right now, and here we have the pie of my portfolio, I have a cash position of 22% or $27,000. And the question is, what should I do with that? When we look at the current Schiller P ratio of 39, this is historical high only in the dot-com bubble in the 2000s, uh, it was higher. And so very, very high valuated market. The median, just to put this in perspective, the median of the Schiller P ratio over the last 150 years is 15. 
and now we are 39 so it really seems like this market is way overvalued the same picture for example is also when we look at the dividend yield the dividend yield is almost on an historic low only in august 2000 it was lower and so the dividend yield right now of this s p 500 is only 1.28 percent so of course we could say okay with this overvalued market just hold cash and wait for crash but then the problem of course is you can't time the market that's just impossible and then when we look at over the last 100 plus years lump sum investing beats dollar cost averaging when investing a new sum of money for 20 years immediately dumping it in at all at once in a lump sum has outperformed dollar cost averaging 71 percent of the time of course kind of a bet but if you bet and seven out of ten times you win I think your odds are not that bad. So if you just think about rational able and you are able to value also your companies and just put high valued companies in your portfolio, the rational way would be just to invest everything and be invested 100% at every time. What to do then when we know that, when we know that lump sum investing over the long term beats dollar cost averaging and on the other side we know that the markets are on historical highs since i don't have the balls to be 100 percent invested in this market circumstances i'm just not even if i know by the historic statistics that lump sum investment is better i just don't have the balls to do that and so what i will do is i will just will invest my incoming cash flow this will be around $1,000 every month and I will invest that as long as there are not really good and big opportunities. And the way I will do it is I will just look at my current portfolio and look how the things are valued there. And therefore I have these Excel sheet for myself just with the, all the positions in my portfolio, the current price, the intrinsic value and the distance to the intrinsic value and then i will just put my money to the most undervalued stock in my view of course and this is what i told you in another video about the china stocks um, i will not put all my money and overweight heavily the china stocks so even if alibaba is here the most undervalued business it's unlikely that I will add to Alibaba because it's already a very big position. But what is likely is that I will add to MI Homes. Maybe also a little bit to Tencent and Baidu since the positions are smaller than Alibaba. And then also take a look at the rest. And next to this table, I also have a table with around 15 companies on my watch list. But also there is not the big opportunities right now. Most of them are fair valued or overvalued right now also there is not the big opportunity right now so this is what i will do and i think i will invest one part of my cash flow at the first of every month and the other at the middle of the month and so i will just invest continuously and will just stick with my cash position right now of around 20 percent and of course when there is a correction or crash or somewhere a big chance then it's also very likely that I will invest more and then also the cash position of course goes down. So that's my plan and we will see how this will work out. Then take a look at the transactions or even better at the no transactions because really nothing happened here. I didn't board or sell, sold anything last week. And also I didn't receive any dividends last week so also nothing to say here and with that take a look at the performance overall first of all take a look at the, every single position in my portfolio and then we see imperial oil is back as my best performing stock with currently 81 percent this is just because this, the oil price recovered last week and so did imperial oil and i told you in also other videos when the oil price will hit in his cyclist around 80 dollar then it's time for me to sell also Imperial Oil. 
We will see if and when this happens. Until then, I just keep Imperial Oil, received my dividends, and I'm just fine with that. So then second best performer is Ledger and Platt, then JP Morgan, the Bank of Nova Scotia, and so on. And at the end of the table, as normal, I would say, in the last weeks, Tencent and Alibaba. My other Chinese investment, Baidu, my latest Chinese investment, Baidu, is already up 8%. And as I said before, Baidu is the smallest position in China right now in my portfolio. It's likely that when the price dips maybe again, that I will just add to Baidu. And as I said before, I also made a deeper analysis to Baidu and why I bought last week. You find the link here up on the screen or just on my channel. Then for the people who are new to my channel, also a quick view on the closed trades. And you see, I had some really good trades with Caterpillar, Walt Disney, Stamps.com, American Express, and so on. And with this closed trades and the open trades, I came to the performance of 66% since 2nd of December 2019. And of course, I'm quite happy with that. And we will see how this will go on. And if you are interested how this go on, and if you want to see if this strategy really works, then just subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell, and then we will see every weekend with a weekly update on this portfolio and normally once a week with the analysis or a topic around the stock market where I give my view on these things. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a big thumbs up. This helps the YouTube algorithm a lot and my little channel. And then we will see the next time with another video. Thanks for watching, see you then, take care, bye bye.